Hi everybody. Today I want to talk about uh, Kroger-Vink notation. Now Kroger-Vink notation uh, is basically a way that we can uh, write defect reactions or classify defect reactions in ionic crystals. So we've talked about ionic crystals previously. So they're made, uh, composed of cations and anions. Cations net positive charge because they've lost electrons. Anions net negative charge because they've gained electrons. And so uh, in a pure or in a perfect uh, ionic crystal, there would be a net uh, neutral charge because there's no uh, defects. But we all know that defects uh, essentially exist uh, in in all materials, even at room temperatures. So you'll basically encounter some cation vacancies, which which will then have a net negative charge because you're removing basically a cation which has initially a net positive charge. When you remove that, now at that site, it's a, there's a net negative charge. And conversely, for an anion vacancy, you have something that's net negative, you remove that, now there's this net positive charge here. But we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. So uh, the main reason that we utilize this kroger vink notation uh, is to kind of uh, write different types of defect reactions. And the reason that we're interested in kind of quantifying and writing the different types of defect reactions that can occur in ionic crystals is because defects control kind of a lot of the mechanical properties, a lot of the electrical properties, optical properties, uh, that these ionic crystals exhibit. So again, we're trying to relate, once again, the microstructure or the kind of atomic structure of our materials to the uh, macroscopic properties, relating back once again to our materials tetrahedron. So the way that we typically use kroger vink notation is you kind of see it written very generally like so. So an X, a Y, and a Z. So the X represents what is currently on the site. What I mean by this is, so okay, right now if we take a look at if any particular site, what is on that site? It could be, you know, so let's say we have a uh, an NaCl crystal, sodium chloride. It could be an A ion, it could be chloride, it could be that a vacancy now is uh, at that site. Um, so these are typically what you'll kind of be, and V is, this capital V is our notation for a vacancy, so a site that's empty. So X is what's currently on the site. Y, you can think of this as what should be there. In a perfect uh, crystal, what does this site represent? So again, it could be where an Na should be, where a uh, Cl should be. It could also be an interstitial. So you note that with little i. So it could be a site in our you know perfect uh, NaCl crystal where you could have an interstitial site. So that's, again, typically what's at Y. And Z is going to represent the charge, the charge of that site. And that's the charge of that site where X now is. So what is the net charge of this site uh, relative to what should normally be there? And we'll get into this in uh, just a bit. Uh, so, you know, when we talked, and we kind of mentioned it previously with these cation and anion vacancies. So Z, if the uh, net charge relative to what should uh, typically be at that site if it is positive, uh, net relative charge. So if we're positive, typically denote that using just basically a dot. If it is negative, uh, we're going to denote it as prime. And if we are neutral, space, as usual, we'll denote it as a small x. So. That is typically uh, kind of how we write and utilize these kroger uh notations. So I want to talk about two uh, specific and actually pretty special and important types of uh, basically defects that we'll encounter in ionic crystals, uh, those being Schottky defects and Frankel defects. And we'll talk about distinctions right now. So Schottky defects are going to be uh, basically uh, composed of vacancies. So charge compensating, because again, uh, and we'll talk about this a lot once we start to compensate. Uh, we'll talk about this a lot more when we get to kind of writing uh, impurity defect reactions. But one of the key kind of conditions that we have when writing any of these notations is that your overall crystal has to be uh, net neutral. So you kind of always have to be worried about, you know, when you create a vacancy with, you know, either positive or negative charge, 
there's going to be kind of this corresponding charge compensating, you know, either defect or some other, uh, you know, uh, yeah, basically any other defect that's going to have to charge compensate. But for shocky defects, we're dealing with charge compensating anion and cation frequencies. Whereas for Frankel defects, we are uh, basically going to deal with uh, a interstitial and a vacancy. And we call these, you know, sometimes referred to as a Frankel pair. So you move one, eye, one uh, basically element off its uh, original site into an interstitial, and then it's compensating because you create basically when you move that uh, when you move that element into the interstitial site, you create a vacancy that's charge compensating. Uh, and so let's write in our first uh, Kroger Vink notation defect reaction. So let's start with shocky defects. So let's say I'm dealing with a ACL crystal, and I ask you to write the defect reaction, the shocky defect reaction for. Let's start with actually. This for this one. So, which is the cation? Which is the anion? So we already know Cl is going to be our anion. K is our cation. It's comp charge compensating, so we're not really nothing is really being kind of created or destroyed here. So we just write null, and we're going to create a vacancy V because that's what at what is at our site currently. We're creating a vacancy at what should be a site on K. So what should be the charge here? Well, we know that K is our cation, so initially K should be positive. When we remove that, now the charge at the site, remember Z, like what we had previously, let's let me write that right here, X, Y, Z. So what we had previously, we're, remember Z is our relative charge. So initially we have something where it is uh, K is our cation, positive. We remove it, we create a vacancy, which now has nothing. So zero, if we do kind of like our final minus initial, zero minus positive one, it's going to be net negative. So it's negative one, and we denote that with a dash or a prime. Now let's write the anion vacancy. Cl, initially an anion, negative one. Now we change it to what is on the site, x is now a vacancy, which has a charge of zero. So zero minus negative one, positive one. We are still neutrals, we've met our requirement. We've completed our, our shocky defect reaction. Let's write now the Frankel pair for again, the same KCL crystal. And instead, and let's write the Frankel pair for just uh, K for a second. So here, Kind of a similar notation. I've seen it sometimes written as null. Other times you'll kind of see it written like this. Not really too much. Uh, actually, this is good practice for when we get into the uh, extrinsic reactions, but we'll get to, you'll get to see that in just a second. But, and actually you write null here because vacancy, vacancy, there's nothing really happening. But anyways, uh, so what will be our Frankel pair reaction for here? So remember, we talked about Frankel defects. You move uh, basically an element from its original site to an interstitial, right? So we are putting our element K onto a site in our perfect crystal, which could be classified as an interstitial. So now what's the charge here? Initially at the interstitial site, we assume nothing's there, so zero. And now our new charge is K, which is our cation. So it should be a positive one. And we denote that with our dot right here. And again, we had to uh, add this electro uh, kind of agreement or, you know, condition. So we form a vacancy because we've just moved our K from its uh, host site onto an interstitial site. So that creates a vacancy where K used to be. Now what's the charge here again? Initially at K, that K site, it was a plus one. We've now created a vacancy, which is zero, zero minus one. And that's negative prime electron neutrality met. So you could write basically shocky defects, sprinkle defects for any crystal, pretty straightforward. Just kind of know and uh, remember those uh, differences here. 
Now, what gets more uh, kind of confusing but more fun is when we start to write uh, basically impurity reactions or extrinsic uh, reactions. So I'll say impurity. Reactions slash extrinsic reaction. We'll see why I say that in a second. Reactions. So one of the way that we one of the ways that we could use, and actually the real kind of uh, kind of power of using Kroger Bink notation is by writing kind of these extrinsic reactions. So Let's think about our kind of KCl host crystal. So that's our this is our host crystal. Now, what would happen if we either have impurities or if we forcibly inject uh, CaCl2 into our host our host crystal? Well, you can't really just inject things without uh, basically changing uh, your kind of host crystal. So there's different uh, defect reactions that can occur uh, when this when this happens. So we could either forcibly inject this, and the reason why we do this is because again we want to create defects and maybe change the electrical or optical uh, properties of our material, or it could just be you know impurities that get into your reaction or into your host crystal, and you kind of want to see okay how is this going to affect our mechanical properties. So uh, you basically kind of look and write different re uh, defect reactions, and then you kind of see okay well you know. Is this behavior scaling uh, appropriately with the uh, types of defects that we're forming? We're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but uh, that's kind of what we're working towards here. So, uh, when you write these interactions, the way that we go about doing this is okay, we are injecting our impurity or whatever is extrinsic right here into just like you know, your typical you know, chemical reactions into your host crystal, which we write top here. So that is what we're putting in here. KCl is our host crystal. So you always put your host over, covered over that line here. So there's lots of interactions that are uh, defect reactions. We'll, we'll get into a couple of them uh, in a second, but let's start and say, okay, well, let's say the defect reaction I think is going to happen is that I'm going to replace the uh, cation position of my host crystal with the extrinsic cation. So I'm going to put Ca or K is going to be. So, what is the charge going to be when that happens? So, K is an anion, is a cation with a positive one charge, and I replace it, or I basically kick it out with CA, which has a two plus charge. So, again, final minus initial, two plus minus one plus, we're going to have a net positive charge, and we denote that with our dot. So, once you decide, or once, you know, let's say you're given a problem where it tells you, okay, that's going to be your first, uh, you know, in, you know, uh, defect reaction. Now we want to see, okay, how can we charge compensate? Because, uh, again, we need to have this condition of uh, net neutral, you know, crystal. We can't have, you know, <laughs> we can't have our crystals having uh, charges here. Uh, that would make a, a lot of problems. So what's one defect reaction that we know we can create that's going to produce a net negative uh, charge? Well, one way that you could do that is by creating a vacancy in what? The anion or the cation? Well, you need the cation, right? Because if we create a vacancy, so where K was initially, we kick it out, we create a vacancy. Finals charge now is zero. Initial charge was plus one. Prime, so it's a negative one charge now. Now our crystal, we are charge neutral here. Plus one, negative plus a minus one, yield zero. So now it comes the complicated part here. In addition to our net electron neutrality uh, condition, where we need to have this net, ne uh, net neutral charge, we also need to make sure that we have mass conservation. You can't just create or destroy elements and atoms in your crystal without, uh, uh, you know, just at will. You always have to kind of have this mass balance. So what you want to do is kind of scroll through. What I do is look through this kind of top line here. So anything that is, uh, when we look at CaCl2, we need to make sure that we have CA and CL in this X position that we've referred to previously. Again, I should write this on every slide, but this is our general Kruger bank. So for mass balance, we've already taken care of electron neutrality by looking at this. X, we need to look at all the X positions across the middle here and see that they uh, 
yield this CaCl2. So you see now, as I scroll across here, we don't see any CLs. So let's just create some and just say, okay, CLs are unaffected. So CL is going to be at our CL site. We're going to have a charge of nothing. Good. But not really, because remember, we need two of these. But you can just put a two right in front of them. It's an ugly two. Let me erase that real quick. And even worse. <laughs> Uh, erase this, give me a little more room. And there we go. So now across the X, we're mass balanced. So this is excellent. So we've ticked off this one as well. But now we need to scroll across Y. Now, what do you think Y? Now, Y is going to be essentially the mass balance for your host crystal here. So I see K, I see K. And there's two CLs. This two, whatever is the prefactor in front, it applies to everything uh, in this kind of element here. So we have two Ks and two CLs. Well, we could fix this by just putting a two here. And this gives us our complete mass balance. Everything's good. Mass balance is fine. Electron neutrality is fine. So we're good to go. So we've created our, this is your first uh, essentially extrinsic or impurity reactions for a KCL host crystal that has CaCl2 being injected into it. But again, I mentioned before, this isn't the only reaction that we could write. You could write lots of different reactions. Uh, so let's do another one real quick. So let's say, KCL here. let's say instead of kicking out that uh, K site, let's just say calcium occupies an interstitial site. A little bit nicer. So what's the charge here? Inici uh, interstitial site, initially, there's nothing there. Now we have a uh, calcium um, cation, so the charge there is 2 plus. So 2 plus minus 0, I have two dots here. So we, can, we need another, uh, essentially, defect reaction that's going to create a net negative uh, charge. So we can just use the one we had previously. Again, there's other ones you could choose, but this is just one reaction that I'm going to write. So. Oh. Two positive here, two negative here, because remember that prefactor uh, applies to everything that x the whole x y z notation. So we're net neutral. Perfect. We've crossed off z once again. Now let's scroll across the uh, the middle and look at those x positions. So we have C A C A, no C Ls yet. So let's write C L C L again. Kind of quick reaction there. We need two of them and perfect. So along X, we're fine. Because remember, we don't really care about the vacancy here. The vacancy is just, it's really nothing. It's a null, essentially. Uh, there's nothing there that we really care about for mass balance. So as long as we have kind of our LMS mass balance, we're good to go. So we're fine there across. Now let's look at the bottom for our, we've done Z, uh, X. Now let's finish off Y. Interstitial, same thing. Interstitials and vacancies kind of uh, behave similarly for mass balance. So an interstitial is something that doesn't necessarily have, or should not, in a perfect uh, ionic crystal, have any elements. So there's no mass there, so we don't care about that. Uh, here is our potassium ion, K. We have that, two of them. We have Cl, two of them. So we just put our little prefactor on the front, just like last time. And now we have our second uh, extrinsic reaction. There's many, many more that you know you could uh, kind of look at. 